Coming up, the genius is back. This is good beer. I smash a tasty noppers. We fight the wind. And I pretend to be an outer glass repair shop. Hello and welcome to part 13 of Project Chicago, the episode where I, while a bit drunk, accidentally delete some footage. Haha, <laughs> I'm a tough. This is good beer. And now I gotta talk you through the intro. In the previous episode, this thing passed German tooth inspection, which means it's finally roadworthy, which means by the end of this episode, we should have license plates on it and hopefully take it for another spin. Boop. This also means that we are in the final stages of this project. And that means focusing on the cosmetical side of it, the paint, the interior, making sure that every single button and electrical feature in here works. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Well, for you, it's a day. For me, it's 300 years of labor. Boop. Anyway, what you also missed is me removing the wheels and dropping them off to be refurbished. They are curved all the way around and they just look horrible and need to be redone. We're going to paint them to matte black. Thus! No, we're not doing that. We're going to paint them back to original silver. Das ist besser. One for me, one out for me. Boop. Then the front bumper, just a little bit crispy. Tasty, but a little bit crispy, so it needs to be redone. The rear bumper, actually not too bad, but it had a lot of small dings, dents, scratches, scuffs, and I want it to be perfect as well. Therefore, it's going to be painted. And we're also going with rear European license plate holder on the trunk. That too needs to be painted along with this mirror cap. That's about it. And now we're going to jump into action and start doing the shocks because that's part of the cosmetical side of it, isn't it? Brand new struts and shocks, OE Zax. Alpina doesn't use any special shocks. This is standard E65 suspension, same as 745i or 730d. The only thing Alpina did here is put I-box springs on it, but otherwise standard E65 suspension. We have brand new mounts, bump stops, rubber bits, dust boots. So let's go ahead and replace all of this. In case you're wondering why am I not going with Bilstein B6, unfortunately they are not available for the E65 platform, hence the stock shocks. First order of business, protect the edge of the fender. We can easily damage this when we start pulling out the strut. So a bit of tape. Unbolt the sway bar link from the strut. Unhook the brake line, then the wheel speed sensor and brake pad wire sensor as well. Two caliper bracket bolts. You can take a screwdriver and push the brake pads away. Get the bungee rope ready. So that's the brake caliper suspended. Now we need to loosen up the control arm bushings. In order to remove the strut, we need to push the whole steering knuckle assembly down. And if you leave it tightened, then there's gonna be too much tension here and we won't be able to push it down. So we need to loosen up this one here and also the thrust arm bushing as well. Now we can remove the pinch bolt. Now we can remove top mount nuts. Now we need to pull it out. Turn it a little bit like that. And then push it down. We need to straighten it a little bit. And gingerly clear it. Now we can spread the knuckle. Pull it out. Now we can compress the spring and this compressor you can find it anywhere on German Amazon. I don't do affiliate links because German Amazon is crap for stuff like that. So I just gave up on it.
Oh, this one is nice and rusty. <clears throat> Not cup. Unbelievable, dude. This thing is rusted. Yeah, that thing was stuck on. Look at that. Crazy. The other one came, came out much easier than this. This bearing. Strut bearing is shot. Oh, this cup is rusted on as well. Oh boy, this one is shot. <laughs> so let's compress it. Yeah, that one is pretty shot. It should go a lot quicker than that. And it pretty much stopped. It doesn't come out all the way. Let me let me show you the new one. Nope. The new one I can barely compress. But look at the difference. This one is already out. This one is pretty much stuck. So this puppy is shot. Brand new lower spring pad. And this one actually makes it rather easy to install. Well, to seat the spring correctly. Just put it in here. See? Very easy. While on the E39, I think E60 as well, you can see instructions from Zax here, how it goes back together. So not like that, but like this, where you see this dip. So slightly before that is where the spring end needs to sit. Compress the vicious spring. Brand new bump stop. Then the dust boot, make sure it clips correctly. This plate, upper spring pad and a brand new strut bearing and a new strut mount. Mount the bearing right onto it. See, not noisy. Clip that in as well. A nut. Nice, good and tight. I make sure that the bottom end of the spring is seated correctly. And it is. And now you can release the tension. And to line up the strut properly, you have this notch in the strut body and you can just slot it in. Now I need to line up this pin here on the strut mount with this hole on the strut tower. Shove it back in. Much easier if you have a second person. But one strong human will do. Now we're gonna employ Hugh Jackman Jr. And we need to jack up from the bottom and push the whole wheel hub assembly and then torque the pinch bolt. Gotta do this to make sure the strut is seated properly in the steering knuckle. Get the bolt in. Don't forget the bracket. Put the cap back on. Release your Jackman Jr. Sway bar link. This is the weird sway bar link where the torque is 20 Nm and then 90 degree angle. As it's 90 degree angle, you can easily eyeball it from here to here twice. I 
That's it. Old lines back in. And that's finito. That's the front strut replacement done. Now we need to torque the control arm bushings, but they are torqued with the suspension fully loaded at the right height, means put the wheels back on, drive it back and forth, and then torque them. If you torque them right now, then you're just gonna twist them once you lower the car onto the ground, and they're gonna wear out pretty quickly. So once the wheels are back, we're gonna put them on, drive the car into the four post lift, and then torque them. We could use Hugh Jackman Jr. to load the suspension from the bottom and then torque it but I don't feel like wrestling on the floor here. It's much easier to do it on the four post lift, so we'll just do it later. Now we're gonna do a spot of cleaning. Most pointless cleaning ever. First rain, and this is gonna look like crap again, but whatever. It looks nice and clean now. Now the rear shocks, in order to wiggle this thing out, we need to remove the fender liner. <sighs> I knew it. Let's do it one piece. And it's stripped. What kind of genius came up with plastic screws? Is that a thing? I'd love to meet the man who said, yep, yeah, plastic screws, let's have that. Rip it out. Another plastic screw. Yeah, it's not possible to undo it. It's, it's melting. <sighs> yeah. Ugh. Let's total the whole car because of a plastic screw. Yuck. Oh, the box is bolted to the body. Nope. Oh. Okay, so just jam the screwdriver in there. Take it out. There we are. <laughs> now we need to undo the lower shock bolt. And the bolt is going to hit the sway bar. Naturally, the sway bar link needs to be unbolted as well. Now we can remove the shock bolt. And I'll give it a nice tap. And now we need to go into the trunk of the car. Everything is already taken apart in the trunk because I was troubleshooting the radio. We'll get to that later, but now. Now we can remove 13 mil bolts here. And I hold the shock with one hand. Yes. Or will you? What? Let's see how good this shock is. Dead. 115% dead. Does not bounce back. Here's a brand new one. Yep, that's a good one. This is why the car was handling so poorly. No shocks in the back. Basically, we're just riding on springs. New bump stops. Come in! New mount. And now it's the tricky bit because you gotta align the spring. Man, I love the spring compressor. Use my lamp to hold the shock in place. And now I can do up the top nuts. So the lower shock bolt, we're just gonna do finger tight. 
because that too is torqued with the car on the ground and suspension fully loaded. And that's as far as the replacement of the shock goes. Now we just need to clean. Clean fender liner going back in. And that's the left side done. Here's the right side. This one is actually even worse. It leaked out as you can see here, but the dust boot was covering all of this up. But this one is really bad. No rebound whatsoever. Really, really happy that we are replacing this junk. Here's the pile of oil scrap, rear shocks completely kaput, and front ones pretty tired as well. I think it's time to go home. Look at me. I look like a mine worker. This is sort of like digging a big hole, money pit and it keeps getting deeper and deeper. But that's all right, just keep on shoveling. Buongiorno, this is an aftermarket mirror. Presumably the old original one was broken and instead of replacing it with the correct part, someone installed this garbage. That means it doesn't have the power folding function, the electrochrome function, and this base here is completely wrong color. It should be like the rest of this beautiful trim, high glossy black. So let's take this off and install the correct part. Another thing we need to fix while in here, the door. It doesn't stay where it's supposed to stay. It feels very uncomfortable in your hands and all four doors are behaving like this, very loose. But apparently it's a common issue on E65. There's some small rubber here that we need to replace and that's gonna solve that issue. So let's remove the door panel. Screw here, let's take the cap off. Then take these caps off here. And there's a screw here in the corner. Take this small cover off as well. I can't wait to fix the door. The battery is disconnected because we need to unplug the airbag. So first let's disconnect the mirror. Then pop this cover here. There are three screws, two here and one over here as well. Here's the replacement mirror. Surprisingly difficult to find with the high glossy base. Bought this on eBay in the US. Took two weeks to get it. Hopefully it works. So first we're gonna test it, make sure the folding function is working and then we can prep it for installation. Oh goody, this is not the power folding one. Brilliant. Yeah, I couldn't see how many pins it had. But anyway, I have another one that I bought in Poland, but that one is for the right-hand drive car, and I already tried it here. And unfortunately, it's not plug and play because the angle, it's all sorts of weird. Here's what we have. This is the mirror that I bought from the US on eBay. It said in the ad that it has the power folding function. It certainly doesn't. This has 11 pins. The one with the power folding function has 13 and that includes the electrochrome and the heating stuff. But this is from a right-hand drive car, which means the angle is totally wrong, and that's because of this base plate. You can see they're not the same. This one is tilted more that way because the driver is on the other side of the car. So now I'm thinking if I can maybe take this base plate and put it here, and that way I have one functional mirror, but this is not serviceable. They are press fit. Although I did something similar on project Cologne E46 when we were swapping the base plates. So I think I can put something together. Nearly there. That's one part of it removed. Yeah, I have to dip in it as well. But for this particular one, I don't care. So we're just gonna cut it. Okay, so this will work. The only thing I'm gonna need is a hollow bolt, which last time I bought on Amazon. All right. I'm gonna try and explain as best as I can as to what we're gonna do here. This is how this part of the mirror is held to the base. There's a coil or spring, and there's a sleeve that's press fit. This guy here that I just removed and destroyed from the other one. So destroy one end and then I can extract it and separate the base from the wing. 
This is the left hand one that we are going to use here in combination with the power folding wing. And instead of this sleeve, we're going to use a hollow bolt that has threads on the outside. And then I can just use two thin nuts on each end and put it back together like that. Make sure to put the exact same tension on the spring that I already measured, 18 mils. And I've done the exact same thing on Project Cologne E46 and two years later, that's still working flawlessly. Now we're gonna separate this mirror here, which means I have to remove the pins from this connector and extract the cable first, because I don't wanna cut it or damage it. And then I can destroy this sleeve and take it out. I have to see if I can find a hollow bolt locally. If not, it's probably gonna take a couple of days to get it from eBay or Amazon. By the way, this mirror, it's incredibly difficult to find. Even if I find one that's black, it usually doesn't have the power folding function or it doesn't have electrochrome or something. Perfect. Okay, separated. So if your mirror is not folding properly, it doesn't stop where it's supposed to stop. It's because of this guy here. It's dirty and it's stuck. So we had the same thing on the E60, if you remember. So I'm gonna take this out and clean it. There's a spring as well. With that clean, we can add a little bit of grease in there. Put the spring back in, the pin. While it's convenient, might as well polish it. Lovely. Let's move on to something else and we'll come back to this later. Let's fix the door, shall we? Need to remove the vapor barrier, which seems to be nicer design than the old ones. Yeah, interesting. So everything needs to come off then. I gotta say, I like this. Much better than the stupid thing that was on the earlier models. That sticky, gummy stuff. This is why the door has so much play and it doesn't stay open properly because there's supposed to be a rubber bushing there. Looks like this. Or actually, it's not rubber, it's sponge. And as you can see, it completely disintegrated. So we need to vacuum all of that up. Ooh, zip tie. And then put this instead, this is an upgrade or something. I got this from Yarax, but I think you can get this on eBay or wherever, because this is a common failure on E65. So take that bolt out and pop this in. Kill. That's nice and clean. So we're gonna apply silicone spray. All right, it is in. So get the sleeve in there, if that's even possible. Oh, excellent. I think a bit of persuasion is needed. Breaking my fingers here. I got a longer bolt to help me install this sleeve inside. That is in. Let's see how the door behaves now. Hi, hey! It stays where it's supposed to stay. I like it, feels very good. Now I just need to do this on the rest of the doors. I'm not gonna put any of the stuff back on because next week PDR guy is coming by and he needs to remove all of the dents on this car. And it's gonna be much easier if he has access to the metal. For example, here there's a big dent and he can easily get from behind and straighten it out. The rear door, we actually have to do a tunnel work here. Same issue as with the front one. It doesn't stay open. 
the soft close is not working properly. If I open the door, you can hear the mechanism just spinning and spinning until it eventually times out and then the soft close doesn't work. But if I open it and lean it back while it's spinning, it's working just fine. So something is messed up in the mechanism there. We need to open it up and see what's going on. And finally, this glass needs to come out because the rubber seal around it is completely shot. This is a common failure on E90, E60, E65. Not sure if any other model, but if the car lives in a hot climate like this one did in Texas, this rubber on the window, it's gonna crumble apart like it did here. It's just, can remove it with my finger and it's all gone all around here. Unfortunately, it's not an easy repair because it requires removal of this entire glass. This, it's, it's like a trim piece and then it has a little bit of rubber on the outside and it's not bonded to the glass, but it folds over the glass and then it's all bonded into place. So there's no way around it. You have to remove the entire glass in order to repair it properly. Normally, I would call windshield repair guys to come out and do this but it's actually doable, we can do it ourselves. I've never done that repair before, but I've already done that side over there, and it's not too bad. The tricky part here is the E65, the rear doors. You're about to see that. There's so much stuff that needs to come out before we can get to this glass. Off with the door panel. Have a look. Have you ever seen such complicated rear door in your life? Welcome to the E65 world. The electric sunshades, the tubing, the two motors, all of that comes out as one piece. And the engineering that went into this to make it work is actually astonishing. I mean, hats off. And that of course means we have to remove this entire space shuttle before we can get access to the stuff behind it. That's the mortar part of it loose. There are zip ties here that we need to cut. Carefully pry the trim off, pull on one side. Just made of garbage plastic. And then this one as well. Screw here, another one here. Three on the side here. One on the bottom here. Slide it out. And that's how it comes out. Pretty impressive, isn't it? This is what I mean when I say that the E65 is engineered amazingly. I love it. It's far too complicated, but I love it. Now we need to hook everything from the vapor barrier. And now there are two torque screws on the back of the vapor barrier, holding the wiring in place. See, incredible amount of work. So let's first fix the door because this is driving me absolutely nuts. The spongy bushing turned into dust here as well. So yesterday I was browsing and I learned that BMW will not sell you that bushing separately, but only the whole thing with the, with the shock. And that's about 150 euro times four insane amount of money and these rubber bushings they are aftermarket but they're about where did they put it i think 12 euros or something like that i also discovered that the easiest way to install this bushing is to just cover it in silicone grease cover the sleeve in grease as well I gotta say, it's still a nice design because the door stays in any position now, wherever you put it, it's gonna stay like that. Let's remove the glass. We need to remove this trim, this one, and that one. Always a pain, this trim, always. And this one here just pulls out. This one is bolted from the back. 
pull out the weather stripping. This plastic here all around needs to come out as well. Clip there and then be careful with clips here for the rear sunshades. Peel the onion. This little trim here just pulls up and we finally have access to the window. And here you can see how it's bonded into place. And now I need to go all around, cut through the stuff, and then we can remove the glass. I have a tin cutter here. Now we can go from this side. So this is the stuff that we'll need to clean up in a bit. But let's focus on the glass itself for now. Here's how that trim looks like. It's plastic on the back with a piece of rubber on the front here that always deteriorates. But the rest of it, it's, it's plastic and it hugs the glass like this. This garbage, 40 euro. New one costs 15 days to replace it. So I bought this tool, which makes it rather easy to remove the old sealant. Just keep it flush with the glass and you are not going to scratch it. So now I'm gonna go around one more time and just scrape all of it off. Now I'm gonna use some acetone to clean up the surface. New seal. And when we go to reinstall this thing, there are one, two, three clips that need to clip in and hold it in place. Start from the top. Now press it on. And there you can see the fresh seal. It's also going to deteriorate in about 10 to 15 years, maybe even quicker. This is probably made from recycled plastic bags or something, because everything has to be eco-friendly, which means it's not going to last. And which also means that in return we are polluting even more because we don't make things to last. That's the window done. Let's go prep the surface on the car. Here we're gonna go with a plastic scraper. I don't wanna scratch the paint, which later can rust. Another white with alcohol, put this piece of foam back in. And that's the surface prepped. Got windshield sealant here, and we wanna lay down a thick layer to where it's higher than this plastic here, because that's what's going to seal. If you don't put enough, we might end up with leaks or wind noise, but even if I put too much, it's easy to remove the excess. And here, especially you wanna do like two lines, because that's what they did from the factory. You can put really a lot here, because it's a big surface. And basically just follow the outlines of the factory sealant that's, that's still in the glass. Oh, my arm hurts. Now I understand why they make battery powered ones. Nice and gooey. 
you need to line up the clips and then push it in. Access here we can remove. I can use this tool here to put more pressure on the glass and then some tape as well. Firmly in place and we can leave it to dry. It's been several hours so let's put the trim back on. First this trim here. screw in the back so line up this one with this here and then we can tighten the screw in the back looking spiffy bit of spit here to remove light scratches that we made when we were prying up the trim with the plastic prior thing Good. Clip here. Clips. Window shade trim. And that's one ugly issue resolved. Looks nice and tidy all around and it just completes the look of the car overall. It's gonna look refreshed from the outside. This is not too difficult. Definitely something that anyone can do. You just need patience and a few tools and you'll get it done. Takes a lot of time because on this particular car you have to disassemble a lot. But for example, we still have to do this on the E60. It's going to be a lot easier because there's no soft close or... Oh, actually we do have shades, but they're manual. So there's no contraption and stuff going on over there. So it's still going to be easier. Overall, I'm very happy how this turned out. Steve the sleeve has arrived, M12 hollow screw, 55 millimeters long, got it on Amazon and it's quite simple. The coil goes there and a nut on the top. Preferably you want to use a thinner one, but the software store only had this, so that's what we're going to use. Here's our base. Coil. Bolt. And then there was a plastic washer on the top, this one. Cool. So now we need to measure and put 18 millimeters of tension on the spring. Right now we are at 22. Nearly there. Oh yeah, I forgot the nut and the screw different threads of course so that means we are going to cross thread it on <sighs> nicely cross thread it on that's never coming off 18 mil in perfect nice and firm and now we can put the cables back on and test this thing now I can put back the pins Time to test it. Ignition on. Will it work? Success! The right one sounds like a helicopter. But this one is working smooth, man. Smooth! Because I also lubricated the gears and everything inside. That is a job extremely well done. Yep, that's working as well. All right, time to install this mirror permanently. Dust it off. This is a rare opportunity to clean here. 
No one's going to know the difference, but we will. Let's test it once again. Brilliant. It's normal that that one is slower. There are different mechanisms and different length as well. There's nothing wrong with it. Nice. You're also going to replace US spec mirrors and install European spherical ones. Okay. Also gonna remove this trim here so we can paint it. They're looking pretty nasty, so I'm gonna clean them, scruff them up, and then paint them. Got some fine scotch bright to remove the, the layer of plastic that's faded. You know the drill, plastic primer and semi-gloss black. Off to the paint booth. Good thing it's not a windy day. F***ing wind. The paint boot has failed me. Yeah, perfect. So let's do this again. How to relocate the paint booth indoors because stupid wind. So I removed the paint, scruffed them up again, and now we're gonna repeat the process. The mirror glass, this is Eurospec spherical glass with the wide angle. You can maybe see the lines over there. And this is Eurospec glass that has the stupid writing on it as well. And it's gonna be difficult to show you the difference on camera, so I'll try and dig out some pictures to show you exactly what's different and how much are these actually better because they're more practical you get a better and bigger field of vision and just nicer to look at compared to these i'm not sure why us cars come with this particular type probably some sort of outdated law or whatever but we're gonna go with the spherical ones the trim also turned out lovely i went with semi-gloss on purpose because if i went with matte black or something it would just kind of look out of place, but this is gonna blend in perfectly with the rest of the trim and paint on the car. Also, anyone want knoppers? No? All right. Luke, with two O's, from Netherlands is coming soon because my Ben Pack two-post lift finally arrived and uh, he loves these things, so I have a big batch just for him. The mirror cap will come later. I had to drop that off for paint as well. And I didn't use the aftermarket one, I used the genuine original part because the, the aftermarket one fits like crap. Can install the gloss. Muy excelente! James May tactic on this mirror. Dust it off. Beautiful. Now you're gonna attack the soft close issue. See if I can unplug it from the from the door handle. Sure can. Come play with us. And the contraption is out. So our issue is not going to be the motor, but this mechanism here probably. That's out. So what's broken here? So I have another used one. I'm gonna open it up as well and just compare them. No, yeah, they look exactly the same. I'm not seeing anything out of place here. The mechanism seems to be working as it should. Nothing is broken. The only thing I can think of is that maybe one of these micro switches or sensors or whatever they are is not working properly. 
and it's not telling the computer and then not telling the motor to stop spinning when the door is open. So I have a used unit here from Yarax from Czech Republic and uh, I also opened it up just to compare them and uh, my old mechanism looks a bit better than this one. So I'm going to use this box that he sent me with the sensors and everything, bolt it to my mechanism, put it in the car and see if it makes any difference. That way at least I can exclude well, one half of it. But first, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this. Bit of alcohol. Let's pop it in. See what happens. How in the? <laughs> you need tiny hands. Oh, it's in. Yeah. All right. I gotta admit, all things considering, that's not too bad to put back in. <laughs> this long one plugs in there. Wait. I really thought I was gonna fight this for the next seven days. Noise! That's brilliant, man. So this door is sorted. Here we have a peculiar issue. Sticky door handle. That's interesting, isn't it? So we're gonna use a combination of two things. First is something like WD-40, only from Liquid Molly, Schnell Rast Lusa, and then smear film, lubricant. This is perfect for lubricating door hinges and stuff. So let's first get this stuff in there. I've already done this on, on the rear right door handle and it worked perfectly. Beautiful. Let's give it some more. This stuff is really good. I used this on the door hinges on the E46. Made it work so much better. And then the following issue with this door. The soft close ain't working. You can hear the mechanism trying to pull the door in but it's not happening. Yep, just spinning and spinning, but nothing is happening. Door panels for everyone. How many electrical connectors and stuff can one car have? Unfreaking believable. Space shuttle has less cables than this. Yep, that one is completely gone as well. Ah, see the issue already. So that piece of plastic that's broken, that's the issue. It's not catching the mechanism properly because it's broken and causing the soft close not to work. So all we need to do is glue it back together. So I'm gonna dig through my collection of glues and epoxies and stuff and find a suitable candidate. First, a little bit of alcohol to clean it, degrease it. We're gonna go with this, plastic epoxy. It's too much. Two hundred years later, Plastic Fantastic is dry, so let's give it a try. And it snapped. So that didn't work, and I really thought it would. So I just found on YouTube another guy fixing this issue, a YouTube channel called Ecological Time. 
and he used super glue and then a zip tie on the outside of it which is a really smart idea to kind of reinforce it so i think we're going to do the same so i have some sandpaper here because i want to scruff up the surface so the glue sticks better alcohol clean it super glue coming in hot so hold it Okay, that's holding. Now I'm gonna go find a zip tie. So I'm gonna scruff up the zip tie as well. Clean it with alcohol. That's the reinforcement piece. Gonna leave that to dry thoroughly. All right, it's the following day. I had, well, things to do, projects to buy. So let's give it a test. Will it break? Ooh. Okay, so far so good. Yes. It's working well. Beautiful. That's not going anywhere. So let's put this back together and give it a test. Oh, there it is. Thin needle nose pliers. So you can just slightly bend the cable and then it slides right in. Lubricate the door handle from the back as well. Thank you very much. Uh, I really thought I was going to struggle for days with these soft closed doors, but thankfully it all worked out. Now all four of them are working properly. Loving it. It's a really neat feature. I like it. All right. What's next? What shall we fix next? The auto dimming mirror on this car is not working. I realized that when I drove it for the first time at night. There's a sensor here, so when you're driving at night and there are cars behind you, it's going to automatically dim this mirror. And when it's not working or you don't have this option, it's just poking your eyes out. So we need to fix it. Really easy way to confirm if it's working or not. Get a flashlight, point it on the sensor, and you should see this thing start dimming. But it ain't doing that. Therefore, it is kaput and we need to fix it. And Yarax from Czech Republic, the E65 guru, sent me a care package for this car. I sent him a list of all of the parts that I needed and he sent me a huge box with parts. And in that box was this. The replacement mirror of the same kind that we're going to plug in now and see if it fixes our issue. But I just want to give a huge thank you and shout out to Yarax. He's been a huge help on this project. Thanks so much, my man. And plug this one. Plug the new one in. Ignition on. See that? I think you can see it clear as day. That one is working beautifully. So the issue is the mirror. So let's install this one. Is it a twist off? Like a beer bottle? Sure is. Got a Baggio. What's with this thing? Yeah, that's, that's not good properly and that's why it's not working. Ah, nice. Yes, <laughs> two issues fixed. So that thing just wasn't <coughs> installed properly. Now I can put back the plastic cover. Confirm everything is still working. Yep, function properly. Rain sensors. It's the small things, you know? We fixed so many things in this car. I love it. Everything is coming together. Let's continue fixing the stuff on this third. The fix -a -ton will continue in the next episode where we'll throw the steering wheel away, carry a heavy sofa chair, Ow. play with an overly engineered armrest, attack soft touch plastic, and a man will hammer all over Project Chicago. As always, thank you so much oh, for watching, nice. and I'll see you next time. It's very light.